Hello and welcome to the Niche Podcast for Friday, June 14th, 2013. I'm Jonathan Stark. And I'm Kelly Shaver. And we're here to talk about building apps that run everywhere. This week, we continue our screencast on how to build a REST API with Ruby on Rails. If you're listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, please visit niche.cc and look for episode 61, and you can view the video there. Please stay tuned. The Niche Podcast is next. Can you hear these clowns <laughs> in the background? <laughs> I just sort of say, can you hear my rock tumbler going in the background? No. No, oh. that's, that's probably good. Excellent. Yeah, I'm surprised. That can't be super quiet. Uh, I thought it's not too bad with the, the office door shut. I've got it in the laundry room. So oh, there you go. Across the hall. Well, if if my sound is a little weird today, it's because my microphone's upside down. <laughs> so you sounded a little inverted. Yeah, I thought so. It's uh, it's funny how you can turn the micro microphone any which way, and it doesn't affect the output. But camera, not so much. Yeah, yeah. We 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 were gonna record the screencast upside down to go with your microphone, but it just <laughs> it was too hard to follow. Yeah, the computer kept falling on your face. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to type backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so uh i thought last week went uh pretty well i'm excited to get into this week uh hopefully i'll yes. be a little less i have a feeling i'll have a lot far fewer questions because we're in code at this point and not set up and set up is the thing that always is painful for me yeah i was i was really i guess since it's probably since the first time we've done this i was really struggling last week with writing code and talking about it at the same time <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah and i I've just I've just come from five straight hours of JavaScript, so I'm switching gears here. So hopefully it's not too bad. Yeah, it's been a crazy JavaScript week for me too. But we digress. So we left off with the uh, person model last week. We created yes. the person model. If um, dear listener, if you did not hear or see that yet, it's episode sixty at niche.cc, so you can catch yourself up. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the next thing. What do you think? Should we do um, the controller or the test next? Um, I've got some tests I just kind of dropped in here. I'm not going to go through writing them, but I've kind of kind of went ahead and, and just dropped in a, t a file with some tests in it if you want to run through them real quick. Yeah, let's do that, and then maybe show people how to actually run it once you have it and once the out what the output looks like. Yeah. Okay, so here is our tests for the person model we created last week. Mm-hmm. And are you seeing those there on your end? I sure am. Oh, good. We're all we're all working good. Yeah. So we've got uh, require spec helper, mm -hmm. which is just the whatever. Yeah, I'll, I can open it up here. It's just, a, it's just a helper file for for R spec. Yeah. Okay. Did you write that, or it comes like? Uh, it comes like that. I added a couple of. Um, I I added the line here um, to require factory girl. Okay. Just so I wouldn't have to put it at the top of each. Um, each spec file. Gotcha. Good to know. Okay. So then in the person spec and you'll, you'll, there would be a file like a person spec. There'd be a, an, a, an entry spec for each model. There'd be a, a spec file. Yeah. Okay. And in here it says, uh, once you require the spec helper, it's describe person do. Mm -hmm. And this is, <clears throat> is that like a function? It's like describe what is describe. Is it like it's almost? It almost feels like a while do, like like it's going to be a loop, but it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're just um, and defining, describing your your tests for your person model. Cool. Yeah, it's super nice the way that it's real English yeah, language. Yeah, And then there's just a, a series of blocks of it has a valid directory in quotes. Do factory go create person should be valid. Interesting. So now factory girl here, what to give me a, is there any way to give me a sense of what it would look like if you weren't using factory girl? Uh, yeah, if I wasn't using factory girl, I would just do something like, um, you could just, um, post to the, to the model and, um, just pass the, uh, pass the parameters for, you know, whatever, you do the create action and you pass the parameters for, okay, for so each field instead of instead of just using the factory. Oh wow. Okay, so that's huge yeah. convenience. So yeah. it's basically like deals with it's it basically like deals with all the all the setup there. Yeah. 
yeah, and here's the here's the um the factory. Gotcha. Stack file. I see. So okay, you're that's... just just setting the model parameters. Excellent. So that gives you just one place where you can set up basically what your your API call is going to be. It's yeah. not really an API call, right? No, it's not really. It's not really an API call. You're just you're just setting up some dummy data to to populate that model mm. instance. Mm. Cool. Yeah. I, I finally had my head around that. I was not yeah. clear how Factory Girl <laughs> figured into there's, this situation. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of different different ways you can gem- use it to generate dummy data. You can do uh, random data or uh, just just all kinds of things with it. Um, here we're just doing just a very basic. This is our model, and and these are. You know, these are the properties, and, and here, cool. Create some stuff for them. So. Cool, great, great, great. Okay, so then back to the spec file. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, this is like, I mean, assuming you're watching the video, this should be pretty self-explanatory. There's, yeah. it's just like you create like a message, and the has valid factory. That's kind of just for you, right? Yeah, it's kind of just for me, just to make sure I haven't got any typos or errors in my in my um, factory spec there, because if you do, then then all of your tests can fail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's easier just to check the factory first, and that way if that fails, you know where your, your error is probably in your factory there. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is like super obvious what you're doing. Um, it, I suppose it's interesting to point out that there's some shoulds and there's some should nots. Yeah. Um, so... You're basically is, testing in value, like you're like if somebody tries to log in without a password, you're right. saying, uh, you know, factor go build person password nil should not be valid. Right, right. You can't you can't create a person without a password. Yes, very cool. All right, sweet. Okay. Um, that's like incredibly self-explanatory. So, um, how would someone? Is it the next thing? Just ro- like run it and just, look, just run them. Yeah. Cool. So we're cd yeah, into the with- into the directory. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just do rake spec. And is is it okay? Cool. So you just ran rake spec, and mm-hmm. what is it? Is there a config file? Are you is spec the directory that is that you're um, in? Spec 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 is the um, command for R spec to run R spec tests. Okay, and, and R spec being the test suite. Gotcha. And it knows to like recursively search around looking for what? Yeah, it looks uh, inside of the spec folder. It goes through the, the test to find in the spec folder. Okay. Can we pop back to that just real but quick? Each time, so. Can we pop back yep. to the directory structure real quick? Yeah. So. Yep. Okay, so it if that folder has to be called spec? Um, For our spec, yes. Okay. I mean, there may be a config somewhere, but you can change it. But I haven't looked. But yeah. But that's what you do. So there's not yeah. like a, there's not like a, a rake file in there or nothing. It's just no. Okay, no. cool. Sweet. Um, that's like this. This isn't this isn't the built-in test unit that Rails comes with. Um, I I like our spec better. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, I mean, this is pretty pretty no config. So that's good. Yeah. All right. Cool. So if you jump back to the terminal, um, uh, what does it say? It says uh, finished in like under a second, seven examples, zero failures. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I seem to recall that there's like a more verbose output. There is. I don't remember the syntax off the top of my head. Okay, cool. And if could we do, can we make something fail? Uh, sure. To see what a failure looks like? Sure. Okay, so you're saying... Uh, creating a person without a password should be valid, and since you're creating yep. one without a password, yeah, and it's going to return it's going to return invalid. And I'm telling, saying the test in the test, I'm saying it should be valid. Mm-hmm. So it's like a complicated double negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So we get a very verbose output that says person is invalid without a password. And it just figured yep. that out from the way that you created the, like that's our spec figuring out right, that right. Sh- you know should be valid. Um, cool, and that's funny so, that 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 data in there that was factory girl just made or faker made that up. Yeah, like the Maximilian at Murray <laughs> Yeah, I was like, wait, is, I was like, uh oh, maybe we should shut where'd up the screencast. Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna no. give away somebody's password. <laughs> 
Um, I suppose you could actually randomly generate a real information for someone, but that would yeah, be a million, thoughts would be crazy. <laughs> infinite number of monkeys. Yeah. Uh, cool. This is super righteous. And the thing I love about this is once you have all your your blocks assembled, your little pieces in place, this makes it really easy to do what you should do, which is run tests. Yes, yes. And it's I find it to be especially useful on an API where you you know, you, you maybe don't have an interface built for it. Right. <clears throat> I could also see if you had an interface and you were trying to determine if the bug was in the UI or if it was in the back end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this makes it really easy to go rake spec and say, "Nope, my stuff works." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So a little yeah. CYA. And, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it'll run the tests um, in random order each time. So you don't run into like errors there with dependencies and, and that kind of stuff. But if you do want to specify the order, like I say, you, you run them one way and then you want to run them again the same way, you can use the, um, that's what the, the seed mm -hmm. there. Set gotcha. that in gotcha. the spec helper. So Cool. Very cool. So, uh, yeah, I wonder, like, if you were gonna, if you were gonna do a test for, um, uh, oh, there's one in there. Requires a valid email. So yeah. I was just gonna say, like, will Faker create like bad data on purpose if you tell it to? So, like, uh, but but I see what you did here. Will you actually pass in bad data into email. Yeah, I'm just passing in. Right. Bad and, data to email. And that. Um, I've actually only used Faker on a couple of projects, so I haven't delved too deeply into it. There may there may be a way of generating bad data. I'm not sure. Hmm. I like email. So what? Oh, right. Duh. I'm like, well, what? Which which piece of the puzzle is saying that? E you know, knows that the email value is actually supposed to be an email, but that's set in the model. Yeah. Can yeah, we jump back, to the jump back to the model sure. just for one second? Sure. Yeah, that's just, our... That's your red X. Right here in the model. Yep. Yeah. God, this is awesome. <laughs> this is so great. Like, I've, I've, like, rolled my own a couple of times with this sort of thing, and it's, like, too painful to ever do again. This is really awesome. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Cool beans. Makes it makes it pretty pretty easy to get something up in relatively short order. Yeah. All right, cool. And even faster if you're not talking to me while you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, geez, I feel like, is there anything else to see with the test? I mean, that's like super uh, self-explanatory. I mean, I mean there's, a, there's a lot more you could do, but just for the basic purposes for what we need, this is probably fine. Yeah. Yep, great. Uh, okay, at least cool. For, at least for a, a one-hour podcast episode. <laughs> right. Is there a way? I wonder if if there's a part of the compile pro not compile process, but like, is there a, a process that you know, like with CodeKit, every time you save a file, it like refreshes everything and gives you in like like syntax check stuff. Like, you can, and you can run the tests every time you. Yeah, every time you like commit or something. Uh, yeah, you could set up. Actually, what you could do is you could set up a custom rake task, and then instead of instead of doing a commit, you could just run the rake task and then pass your commit message to it, and then have the rake the rake task would then uh, run the spec, and then if everything passes, do the commit. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that'd be perfect. So you know, you just know because I'm going through, I'm like plowing through a project at top speed, and like you know, definitely on a couple of occasions have broken something that. You know, it's like a front end thing. So it's like, yeah. it's like you do one thing and something else, you know, refactor the JavaScript and something breaks somewhere. And <clears throat> it would be so awesome if like I went and did a commit and it was just like, oh, can't commit yet. You broke something yeah. on the events page. Yeah. And actually I've got another project I'm working on that's like that. And um, uh, for instance, you run, you run the deploy rake task and, and you specify if you want to deploy to staging or production and it runs the tests and commits and pushes to GitHub and then with all of that goes and then runs the tests and if that goes through fine then it commits uh, to GitHub and and then if the GitHub commit goes through fine it pushes the master uh, master branch to Heroku. Awesome. So it's like three or four three or four different steps there and then the yeah. That's all, really all cool. One rake task. Cool. All right, great. So I guess we could move on to the controller. 
move on to the controller. This is the this is the exciting part everyone's been yes. waiting for. Drum roll, yes. please. All right, great. So we're going up to the controllers you're directory. The, you're the musician. You should have been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yes. so going going up to the controllers so directory and here's application controller, and yes. I'm assuming that that's like a fairly empty yeah. Yes. Protect from forgery, which is to prevent cross-site scripting, but we're doing an API, so that's kind of, yeah. we kind of want people outside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you delete that, and we will do more in this later, because I'm putting, I've got a couple of little things to put in there later. But for now, let's go ahead and make the controller for our people. Yes. And of course, um, model is singular, controller is plural. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Uh, so this is Rails generate controller of people. Yeah. Oh, then I'm just sweet. Passing. So those are default. Yeah, if you don't pass anything, then it'll do. I think there's seven defaults. It'll do index, index show, new, create, edit, update, destroy. Mm. But there's we don't need all of those, so right. I'm just gonna create it with the ones we need. Cool. And there you can see the files it's generated. Um, people controller, of course, and you get your routes. Invoke yep. ERB, so that's making views, I guess. Yep. Invoke our spec. Yeah. It's cre oh, yeah, we don't really we're not we're not gonna worry about the reviews, so what's the, I mean the views, so right, right, right. What's the R spec thing? Uh it creates a creates a um a oh, spec, controller test. Controller right. spec for us, yeah. Now how did it know to do that? How did it know to do R spec if R spec's not the uh, uh because because I specified in the gem file that we're using R spec for testing. Gotcha. Wow, that's pretty fancy. See, remember we put it back. Put it in here. Uh, my screen's not refreshing, but I do remember that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah. Sweet. Look at that. It's like magic. Yeah. So, and then you can see here we have our controller with the four empty methods that I passed to it. Yep. And actually, I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean up that routes file a little bit because you see that it added... Added the routes here at the top. And those are not all going to be. Yeah, why? Yeah, you'd think like update and destroy would not be get. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of weird that it does that. Yeah, so I'm going to change that. Resources, people. Only. So you're saying those are the only methods? Yeah. And then that's going to go ahead and, and use the, um, the rest verbs that we need for those resources. It will automatically? Yeah. So that's interesting. So the previous way that it was set up it was kind of like v very web appy, where it was like if these are the URLs, you know, in the location bar. And that was weird. I guess that the defaults all being get really is throwing me, but I guess we, you know. Well, the defaults aren't aren't um like if uh, like if I were just to generate um. Like if I were to generate a generate as a, a resource instead of controller, like for instance Rails G, remember, um, here I did Rails G controller. Mm -hmm. um, if I had done like Rails G resource instead, mm -hmm. then it it would have it would have done would have done the routes just like just like we have here. Um, mm -hmm. 
without the without the only um what it in the routes just like we have here and use the uh, the rest verbs but if you're if you're just generating the controller then it just adds them as get routes as get interesting okay so good to know but um but then it wouldn't have done any if you did resources it wouldn't have created the controller file uh yeah it would have it would have created the controller file it um and it it would have created a few uh you know a uh, a few extra things that we don't need, so I just I didn't do that. It was gotcha. easier just to create the controller and, and then change the route. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Well, that's w- wicked easy if you know to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sweet. So now yeah. <clears throat> the route the routing file when it gets um, any of those. See, it's not clear to me what the routes are though. Like, what is the route? Okay. Yeah. Um. Let me. Let me show you the routes. You screen updated? Yes, I see. Yes, see the okay, routes. Okay, so now, there. right, that's because you just made that change. Uh, yes. Yeah. Then you run rake routes, and it'll show you, for instance, post to people. Sweet. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> get put, delete, yeah, yeah. Get your get your restful restful routing. Though. Right. So that what it's doing is saying on the left that sort of the the slash path is like the first one. People post slash people, and then parentheses dot format. You can probably yeah. get XML or JSON or whatever, right? Uh, yeah. And we are we're going to pass it in the header, but um. You know, right, we're going to yeah. pass it as an accept header. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can do it. You can do it as an accept header or in the URL either one. So. The format, you mean? Yeah. Yep. And then what it's saying, and then on the sort of there's like a little table there, and the last column of the yeah. table is like people pound create. That's telling you that in the people controller, it's going to run the create method. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Cool. It's almost like they knew what they were doing when they wrote this. <laughs> I know <laughs> some smart people did this or something. Yeah. The learning curve is well worth it. Yeah. All right, cool. So now, uh, I need to create first, like mental or, or um, mentally, yeah. Create. We'll do create first. All right. So create is going to be expecting some uh, a post payload, data payload. Uh yes. Well, it's gonna it's gonna accept um. It's going to be exce- it's going to expecting an, an array of parameters there, and we're actually going to get that from we're going to do a model uh, define a model params private method for for creating creating those from the post data. Okay. And what's the at symbol for here? Is it just a Ruby thing that I'm too stupid to know about? Um, it's like a local variable. Yeah, it's, it's like the difference between a global variable and a lo- local variable. Yeah. If we do the at symbol, then, like, if we just did person, then um, the person variable wouldn't be wouldn't be available inside of our view files. Uh, if we do at person, we can get it inside the views. Oh, so at's the global version. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep it real simple here. Mm-hmm. And that is the view file. Yeah, I'm gonna create a um, a rebel view file for that, which I will show you um, next. Cool. Okay, okay. so. Remember how I said I don't know if you remember or not. I said last time um, instead of using the Rails built in. Um, attribute accessible. We're using uh, st- the strong parameters, Jim. I do remember that. Yeah. Um, this is what strong parameters. Uh, how we're going to implement it here? It gives us gives us a lot more f- uh, flexibility in determining um, what parameters are accessible and when they are, and, and that kind of thing. So you set it in. Instead of defining it as you can access this, this, and this at the model in the model, you can define them in the controller, so they can be a lot more flexible. Gotcha. Right, you have conditionals or whatever. Yeah. So what's the private word? 
Uh, defines a private method, so like you can't accidentally via a URL call anything defined in the. And is it like positional within the document? Like everything after that is private. Everything or? after that is private. Yeah. Okay, that's weird. It makes sense, but it's like not something you see in other languages very often. All right, so you've, you're defining this method that you call above, and what you're saying is, no, this params is just a magic. Yeah, params is anything that's passed. Uh, URL parameters get um, all your all your get post put parameters. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and I'm assuming you never change, like you don't configure that to be called something else. It's just always params yeah. is like a reserved. Yeah. And permit, you're saying only these things. If there's yeah. anything besides this, does it just ignore them? It just ignores just them. Just ignores them. Mm -hmm. So those are the only only um, only things we're gonna like. You can't you can't set an ID via create or, or update. So gotcha. You can't change change can't change the ID or, or anything right, like that. Right, right, so. right. Okay. Um, do you want me to go ahead and do the the view for the create? Yeah, that makes action? sense. Yeah, let's okay. do that. Yeah, actually, we're gonna. Um, there's a lot of things in there we don't need. And now, Rabble is. Uh... You've told me this, but I, sh I should know, but I don't. It's the, just the templating. Uh, yeah, just the, temp the templating engine for the building the building the API responses. And normal, and normally it's, it's ERB, isn't it? Or, or uh, yeah, ERB normally, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Rabble is comparable. Yeah, if you if you, if you um, end it with Rabble, then it's gonna gonna run it through um, the Rabble gem instead of um, Herb. Is that we say herb? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'll take it from you. And then, all right. So there's our person object. And you're just that could be you're just does that have to match or you're just arbitrarily picking a no that's the that's the person object that's passed from the controller. Okay. And so well, you're kind of here. gotcha. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. And then I'm just listing the um, the attributes that we want to return. Why is the um, why do you have to? Do you know why you have to do that? Like, and a lot of templating templating languages, um, and this is kind of a bad thing. The, mm -hmm. the template file, the person who's authoring the template file kind of just has to know what the incoming variable or incoming array name is supposed to be. And there's this sort of disconnect between the person who's writing the logic file and the person who's writing the template because they have to coordinate out of band to say, okay, here's the stuff I'm going to pass your file. And now here, you're a little more explicit. You're much more explicit about it. You're saying yeah, we're expecting an object, you know, at person, it should have these attributes, and um, so. Yeah, what I'm what I'm doing here is saying this is our this is our person object, and then the attributes that I'm listing are the attributes of that person object that we want to expose. Like for instance, we don't want to pass password or password salt, and we don't really need updated at. Right. Okay. We don't want we don't want those to appear in our JSON object. Right, and then that's all you need to do, and then Rabble is going to detect, detect that oh, you're you're giving it sending a JSON response, and these are the attributes you want you want, and then it's gonna it's gonna just go ahead and, and generate that that JSON object for you. That's it. And so that's all. That's it. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so I guess really, I was thinking for a second there that I'm like, oh, it's a little bit annoying that if I change my person model, I have to know where all else to change it. But it's good that there's a separation there because, like you said you're not necessarily going to want to return everything from the model. So you need a place right. to specify what you, you know, it's a template, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. So at other, at other, in other scenarios, I've handled this by modifying that person object before I pass it to the, whatever's going to render it. 
Mm-hmm. But this is a lot more explicit. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot easier. So you, you don't have to don't have to mess around with your your um, your person. Right. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> you go blind. Stop messing around with your person. <laughs> so. <laughs> So can we jump back to the model real quick? I have a question sure. about ID and created at. I don't remember. Sure. Um, I think what you may, you may be thinking of the database migration. Well, where do we, yeah. Well, I guess the real question yeah. is where does, does created at and ID get defined? Yeah. Well, everything's going to have an ID by default. You can you, you can tell it not to, to. You, yeah. yeah you can tell it not to but that's kind of a dumb thing to do. <laughs> the the very, thing about very, IDs very rarely yeah. The the thing about IDs I think by default this is like sequential integers right. Mm-hmm. I'm not always a fan of that. There's some applications where I'm going to be creating actually creating records offline on the client side so I want to use GUIDs for everything. Yeah. So if you, you <laughs> Yeah. So if you're going to do that, you'd probably have to write some custom function in here and override the default behavior or what? I have I have used um like string based IDs mm-hmm. like as as primary keys before. Mm-hmm. Instead, but I find it generally easier to maintain the sequential IDs as they are, and then if you want to add, um, like then maybe add a add another column for the for the the greed, and and use that. Okay, that's fair. And then you can still use the the sequential IDs internally for referencing things like um, like model relationships. That's fair, yeah, because it does get um, when you have to do some kind of forensic thing directly on the database. It, it's really yeah. hard to yeah. You like writing things down. Like, yeah. Here's this giant ID for, you know, whatever, and it's supposed to. It's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. I like that yeah. idea. I like yeah. that idea. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I I know the project you're thinking of. Mm. <laughs> I'm wishing we'd done that. And I had to do it yesterday. <laughs> yes. It's not impossible, but the. No, it's not. It's and, not. And the thing is, like, is that you still the 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 guid column still has a, a problem, which is that. It, that now you've got two primary keys, and if you truly are creating, rec- well, we don't need to go into this. It's a separate conversation. <laughs> but good to know that there, you could do that if you wanted to. And then created at you, you is that another one that? Uh, just that's the last line here. The t dot timestamps. And that it's does create created an update at. It does both. Yeah. Fab. God, it's like seriously. This basically does everything. Does everything. <laughs> you stop paying me soon, aren't you? <laughs> oh please. Okay, what do you what do you want to do next? Do you want to test this create action or do you yeah. want to go ahead and fill in the others or Yeah, it's time for some sexy. Let's see the let's okay. actually see something. Okay, so I'm gonna test test the create. So this file is okay. This is a R spec. Yeah. Spec file for the people controller. Yeah. And I'm gonna. Yes, and actually, I have like the test here that I have done. So I'm just gonna. Cool, like, like TV magic. Pull the pie yeah, out of the oven. TV magic. Yeah, our pie is done. <laughs> yeah, magic. and this is this is um, trip me up for a while here. Um, if you're you're when you're testing, like there there are our spec has you can do controller tests and you can do view tests. As you can see here, it's created a um a views folder as well. Mm-hmm. And in an API that's not really applicable or necessary, mm-hmm. we're just gonna, um, you know, we just we just want to use, we just want to check it at the controller, mm-hmm. and so you have to include this render views, otherwise your controller test is not going to return your your view data. 
Gotcha. So it won't like do the so, rabble piece. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's yeah. just an instruction, a global instruction to render. To the tell, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's not, that's just defined within RSpec or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's so confusing. Like that's a, that's basically a function call. Yeah. With no parentheses at the end. Well, yeah, I mean, basically, it's it's not a variable. It's, it's so confusing. It's nice to look at, but you kind of have to know what you're looking at. <laughs> I guess. So okay. So whatever, you just have to know that you just do it. Yeah. Can be so well before you. That's oh. this test is definitely different. So. Uh, it can be created arbitrary text do request dot env so this is a an array on the request which is created by our spec i guess or yeah girl. this is actually this is actually the the asterisk there is full of our all of our view tests that are created by default that we don't need and we're not going to run mm-hmm. so i'm just going to go ahead and delete those uh, i think i lost your screen here. Oh, there we go. Make a lot. It's confusing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Do you want to look at the? Sorry. Sorry. I, I went and ran it, and you were talking about the test itself. <laughs> did you want to look at the? Did you want to look at the test or the uh, the output? I'm confused here. Where do you want to be? Yeah. So the so inside the what I'm seeing on the screen right now is the people controller test. Yes. And it says render views, and it says it can be created. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is kind of the same as the create in the model test, but we're saying that it can be created through the API. Right. This is like a higher level test. Right. So does this, does this kind of like, when you run this, does it actually create a record? Uh, yes. Okay. So it's kind of also testing the model in a way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I just I just like to do it in layers. So <laughs> no, 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 I totally get one working before doing the other. Yeah. So yeah, I'm the exact same way. But yeah, I mean, if your if your model if you didn't have model test and your model was screwed up and you couldn't create, then you couldn't create through the API, then your test would still fail. Right. So th- there's really only two. So the the request dot env line. Mm-hmm. What's what do you need to know about that? Anything or is, uh, it, is it always going to be the same? Yeah, that's your environment variables for um, for the request, and I'm just setting the HTTP accept header uh, for the request to uh, JSON. Okay, so this is the kind of thing I'd set up if I was using curl to test an API. Yeah, you'd have to just set your headers, you know, which is a there's yeah. a which is like a special kind of hell. But uh, <laughs> yes, so this yes. is just really easy. You're saying okay, bef- you know, when, when you're creating this request, set the HTTP accept header to application JSON. And then do a post create, create, post create. Yeah. Well, create there apply is, um, are we, spe- what are we specifying there? I mean, if we post to, excuse me, if we post to, what is yeah, create it's gonna, there? It's going to, it's going to post, it's going to post to that create method. But if we post anywhere, it's going to go to the create method, right? Like this is the people controller, yeah. So it knows to post to slash people, yeah. So create f- seems redundant here to me. Yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. But I suppose I could have more than one post. Like, could you have yeah, more than you one can, method you can associated have multiple, with post? You can have multiple post routes. Yeah, you could have. You can have multiple like methods in here set up to create post uh, set up to accept post values. Uh, I suppose that's true. Like if you're, uh, that would be, okay. Let's just say someone set it up like that. I don't think I would, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's probably not, it's, you know, it's not, it wouldn't be a best practice, but. Yeah. I could see, I could see it though. There could be like some yeah. kind of batch you want to send in like multiple creates at once. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. All right. So yeah, let's say, you know, we've, we're, we've got a project where you need to create like 500 records we don't want to make 500 requests we just send one payload that's an array so that that's a post so that that's the same kind of thing yeah okay 
Gotcha. So in other words, so to make a long story short, you're just specifying the method. Yeah. Gotcha. And then response should be success, meaning HTTP uh, success. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. Yes. Should be a, a status code. One of those success status codes. Sweet. All right. Great. Yeah. That's you can you can test for a specific status code. Like we could specifically test for um, a two hundred one. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, I'm not. And then we'll just run the tests again. And it's going to run all the model tests. Yeah, it's going to run all of them. You can specify which file you want to run, but. Yeah. Oh, do we still have do we still have that? Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I created a helper spec so you can test helper methods, but we don't have any helper methods, so. Okay. Again, same with same with views. I'm just gonna delete it because we don't. Don't need it. Cool. So yeah, as you can see, those those weren't failing. It was just saying, oh, there's you know, see the asterisks there, and and they're marked as, marked as pending tests because there were tests that hadn't been written yet. So. Gotcha. Sweet. But yeah, now you see we'll run them and bang, eighty samples, zero failures. Yes. Showing. So now we can let me let me tell you what to do next. Okay. Rails S. <laughs> Is that what we do next? I'm just guessing. Start the server. Yeah, and then what do you, can what do you we look at? Uh, will it, did it? Is uh, oh wait, we, did we delete the views? Is there any way to to? Um, yeah, I guess there's no view for no, that. No, we didn't delete the views. We have the rebel view. Right, right, right. Is there a way to? V what I'm trying to see is like, can we actually see the JSON response, or is that not something you do in the test? Um, we could, we could output it in the logger, but I don't like, like we could output it in the test logger, but I don't have the necessary gems installed for it at the moment. Right. So how would you, so we know that it's a success, but right. the, uh, yeah, the sexy is actually like seeing the request and the response. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see there, there is. Mm. You can see there. That's um. Oh wow. Yeah, it's so showing it's, yeah, showing the the SQL nice. query, and then it's rendering. Yeah. Does that say point nine milliseconds? Yes, or nine point one milliseconds. The one above that though is like. One above that? Oh yeah, point nine milliseconds. Yeah. Jeez, that's low. All right, <laughs> select for the. Uh, Uh, yeah, like you could you could output the res yeah. you could output the response body into the log. I I just brand brand new computer and I just I haven't haven't installed the stuff to do it yet. Yeah, this is pretty good though. Could we view the database? Yeah. Is there an easy way to view view the database? Uh, the test database kind of cleans itself up when it's done. So. <laughs> oh, I was going to ask about that actually. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. So I believe it. I believe it does. That may have. Give a setting. Let me. SQL like professional. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, there's there's no rows. Yeah, it cleans up. Oh, in the schema migrations, it keeps track of them in there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That makes sense. Where else would you keep track of them? <laughs> yeah. And that's so they can undo them or whatever. Right, right. So you can roll back. Cool so, beans. All right. So sweet. every time every time you migrate the database, it doesn't have to run all of them again. Right. That kind of thing. Right. All right, awesome. All right, so um, yeah, I guess back to the controller. And then... Yeah, if if you just want to test this and make sure that that, like I'm not outputting the JSON, but if you just want to test to make sure it's valid JSON, mm -hmm. we can just do... I'm 
unless I'm misremembering. Cool. God, I was waiting for you to type a semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. And for instance, uh, that way, you know, if the JSON coming back is not not valid JSON, we'll get a, a JSON parser or there it'll cause the test to fail. Gotcha. So, just a quick way. Cool. All right, great. So, I guess then at this point, it's just off to the races. Like, start making more. Uh, yeah. Little routes are all set up. It's just a question of. Yeah. Building more. Building out your controller and adding tests. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. And in fact, here, let's override the default email. You may, have, you may have to edit this. <laughs> no, this is my favorite stuff. There we go. Yeah, and in fact, I'm I'm overriding the. Just, just see what I did there. I override the default email mm -hmm. by specifying my own, mm -hmm. and then after I get the JSON object passed back, I I parse it and then I check to make sure that the email included. Yep. is actually mine just yep. to just, you know, just kind of validate that. Oh, Hey, it worked. <laughs> right. What's the, what is the name for uh, above on line nine where you have email fat arrow Kelly? Is that an array? Is that like a, like in, in PHP, it's an associative array. Mm -hmm. What is it called in Ruby? Well, it's a hash table. A hash table. Okay. Yeah. And can it, can it be nested? Like, uh, you know, like, could it be pointing at another one? Not not here. In not another, in this. Not not here. Oh, but yes, yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. So, so you, you threw me out of threw me for a loop there when you're talking about it in this context. No, but not in there. general, yes. <laughs> yes. Sweet. All right, cool. So if we jump back to the people controller. Yes. Let's see let's see, um I don't know if you have a TV magic set up for these or if it's really it doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to fill these out. No, it's not. Awesome. So let's do the, the other three. And then we could probably uh, pause there. Okay. Okay, so that's interesting. So person, so you're grabbing it out of the database, basically. Person, mm -hmm. find. Yeah, and we'll change that a little bit later when we require authentication. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and grab that person to begin with. Yep. Um, but for now. Params is the magic array. Mm -hmm. And... ID right. is the, the ID that we're passing. Yep, and I didn't ask this before, but why does it know... Why does this file know that person is our model that we're using? Or how, like, how does person, it, why isn't person undefined on line four? Is that just because the application controller keeps track of that? Um, just uh, as long as, like, as long as the person model is loaded, which it's going to be, hmm. you know, if, assuming it exists, it's going to be loaded. Like, like you can reference, you can reference some. Um, other models, uh, like I could reference any other model inside this controller as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it's it's just it, it's just it feels a little funny because there's like no include at the top of this file, but this <laughs> file's not getting called directly. It's getting called right. by a controller, the application right. it's controller. All, it's all getting loaded. Yeah, it seems like that would open up. 
Okay, forget it. Just keep going. <laughs> it feels mad. That feels like another bit of magic there. It's like, how do I, how am I sure I'm not, I don't have a conflict between some other, some other global object called person. This is all, this is gross. Oh my God. It's like heaven. <laughs> and the way back in the day, like I'm talking about like six years ago when mm -hmm. Rails wasn't, was like, everyone was getting really excited about it, but it was still like, you still, Ruby wasn't installed on any servers or anything. It was like, it was a little tougher to find Ruby compared to like PHP. Yeah. But back then I remember this stuff getting slagged for being kind of slow, like line 15. Um, but, mm -hmm. but Ruby has rails anyway, has totally proven itself to not be yeah. slow. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's totally, totally not slow. Totally not slow. <laughs> Jeez, I can think of some projects we did with PHP that you could probably rewrite in a weekend. I know, this. I know. <clears throat> so that's interesting. You're giving a, uh, you're giving, um, It's probably a little more ver ver verbose than it needs to be. Well, it's it's interesting that you didn't check for success in any of the other ones. Um, yeah, that's mostly laziness on my part, just for this simple demo. I mean, I mean, if you have if you have an error, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna return it anyway, right? Yeah, it's gonna return it's gonna return it anyway. It's just yeah. Like for instance, if you do if you go. Like if you go to update and you look up, so you do your person, your look up person, and the person's not found, then instead of instead of updating, trying to update or render this, it's going to return a 404. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, the difference between a um, like an HTTP error and a database error. Yeah. So here, if you get a database error, you're returning a 500, which is like a server fault. Yeah. Which makes sense. Like I could, like I could, I could, you know, for, for the purposes of, of this, I could easily just like take out the check. Mm -hmm. And so here you're rendering and the other ones, it says render people show, which is in, which is the rabble. Which is the view, the rabble view. Yeah. yeah. And here you're not because he deleted it. Right. Right. Okay. And right, what's so nothing? Nothing. Just it's telling, telling the renderer to render nothing. Gotcha. <laughs> so return just like just empty, the empty quotes. An empty body. Empty body. Excellent. Holy cannoli! That is just like so cool. <laughs> Do you want to drop in a couple more tests real quick? Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, there it is. And there it is. The weekly call. Yes. It is not for me. Rad. The weekly call, yes. <laughs> yeah, so you see here's Yeah, this is the same kind of thing I was doing above where you, you get the get the JSON data and parse it and check the, check the value. Let's see here. Uh, get show. Oh man, so I just love this. It's like there's granted there's a lot of there's a I wouldn't say a lot of setup. There's a for someone who's new to this. There's there's a keyboard smashing day ahead of you <laughs> yeah. of getting your environment set up. Yes. And but once you do that, and the the part of the the part where you're going to spend the vast majority of your time when you're working on an API or whatever kind of like web application is going to be in these files. Mm -hmm. And because of the way that the, the background is all set up, 
your environment is all set up, it makes your actual day-to-day work way easier, way more maintainable, super easy to read. It's almost like a pleasure to work with. You can, I mean, you can see that it's probably a pleasure to work with compared to like, um, even if you're, even if you're very disciplined about, um, your approach, it is hard to imagine it being cleaner than this. Wow. This is great. Cool. Now, so I've got a line in here to check for authorization, mm-hmm. which we're not doing yet, and I suspect we'll save that for next time. Yeah, yeah, that'd be perfect. That's a good but show a unto good itself. Place to start, yeah, because there's a, a few a few things we'll add to the the people controller to show some uh, check for authentication or authorization next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a key piece. That's pretty much in every single one of these we do. So. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and make sure that it can be updated and deleted. So I'm just going to, I mean, it's not going to hurt to pass any of that and not use it, Mm -hmm. but for now, I'm just going to comment them out. Right. So let's see if these are pretty, these seem pretty obvious. Put update. Uh, this is all basically the same as the first one, just with different verbs mm-hmm. and different methods. Um, yeah, we're going to update something and we're going to fetch it. And... Right. First you wait. Yeah. Why does that one have two requests? Um, cause I'm updating it and then fetching it really. I could just, I could check the response of the update rather than fetching it the second time. Right. But in practice you are going to also fetch it. So. I got, yeah, I see what you mean, though. I mean, you could delete that because you have another yeah, test. Yeah, I could, for... I could delete that and just check the response. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I could, I could save the response body from this and check it. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, but I see what you're doing. You're retrieving it and seeing yeah. if the, the email yeah. matches. Yeah, okay. Yeah, different strokes. Six of one, half a dozen the other. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and then I'm... Um, I always say that wrong. <laughs> I would say I would say uh, half of one six dozen of another. Yeah, that's that's totally not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let me let me cross my fingers and, and run my tests. Yeah. I run my tests and cross my fingers. It's hard to do with your fingers crossed. Yeah, typing with your that crossed fingers. Two fails. see there yeah what does it say okay cool wait uh my screen is just is a little slow so the failures people controller can be awesome. updated uh email should be expected got nil so cool while well, the tests are working so if we go back do you think we'll yeah see the error of our ways see the error of our ways so let's go back and look at our controller and see if we can figure out where we went wrong here. Or it could even be in the test, right? Like the the test might not have passed in. Um, which one was it? Update. No, you are passing in test example. Mm-hmm. And then retrieved. See, here's what, like, I would like to see what got retrieved, but it said nil, right? Yeah. All right. So we updated ID. So put update. So actually, that's on line 33 of the mm-hmm. people controller spec. It seems a little strange to me that you're passing in the ID. On line 33? Uh, on line 33, right. So, like... Yeah, yeah that, that would get passed and... Like in in the um, in the URL, it would it would look like. It would be like a put action to that. Right. So, but, but wait a second. So you so in this function you're creating a person because there is mm-hmm. no existing one. Yeah. Right. And then you're saying. Okay. You're just trying to update the email. 
of the person you just created. So the create could have failed. And how would it know to, how would it know to use the ID? It just knows like ID has to be in the uh, URL. Like ID is going to be passed in the URL. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's look at our log. Yeah. There's a lot going on there. There's actually a lot of places that could have failed. Although it seems to indicate that it's email. Well, let me open it in. Whoa. Oh, anti characters. What? I'm not seeing it yet. All of the, the color code. Color characters. Yeah, my screen's not refreshing yet, but yeah. Don't worry, you're not missing much. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mess. Yeah, okay. So, well, first of all, we were having our retrieving test, our retrieval test was failing too, so. Oh, okay. Start there. Makes sense. So if we go back to the test, we have to create someone first, right? Yeah. To show them. Yeah, there is. So it can be retrieved. So create person. Okay. And factorial create has the default data in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Response should be success. Okay. So did you, I don't know if my screen's refreshing, right? On line 21, did you just add response equals? I did, but I deleted it because I don't need it. <laughs> oh. Response like, object is returned by default. Okay. Um, Put update. Doesn't have something to do with line 20 being commented out, does it? No, it shouldn't. Let me try. Jason first name should equal person first name expected Ernestina. Got <laughs> nil. Yeah, makes no sense. I hate to leave it on a cliffhanger, but uh, we're out of time for this week. I'm Jonathan Stark. And I'm Kelly Shaver. And we hope you join us again next week for the Niche Podcast. See you later. Bye. <laughs>